Chris the Nightmare Ariel, and you're watching Mission Boxing Today on YouTube. Heavyweight boxing fans, what's the deal? Well, I don't know, man. According to Eddie Hearn, it looks like uh, Joshua vs. Klitschko 2 will be happening in November. This was on an interview. I'll leave a link to the interview if you guys haven't seen it yet with Radio Raheem and Eddie Hearn. It was on Seconds Out, a YouTube channel. And according to Hearn, that's pretty much going to be the next fight. And we're just waiting for Klitschko on his side to confirm it in the next three to four weeks here. So, looks like that'll be the fight. But if that is the case, man, let me give credit to uh, Vladimir Klitschko, man. Um, just you don't see too many fighters around like him uh, that want the toughest challenges. You know, when he loses, he want to get right back in the ring with the guy that beats him. He went on that long streak, uh, 18 successful uh, title defenses. And then he ended up losing to Tyson Fury. And then after that, he wanted the rematch. You know, he didn't try to get out of that fight, the rematch. He didn't, you know, bag out and try to take a soft touch to, you know, shake the rust off or nothing. He wanted to get right back in with Tyson Fury. And we seen what happened during that whole little thing when they were trying to get that fight together. It didn't happen. So then he went to the next best thing as far as on the money end although it's not all about money for klitschko but to make some money and to fight one of the guys that people are looking at as the future of the heavyweight division and that's anthony joshua uh whether you want to say joshua or whoever your favorite fighter is but you definitely have to put anthony joshua in there and shit after he fought klitschko you can see why but i applaud klitschko for doing that for getting there with somebody that's young hungry uh and it's one of the guys that everybody's looking at as one of the guys that lead us into the future. And he's been wanting to fight those type of guys, but he's been doing that his whole career, whether it's been a Samuel Peter or it's been a Kirbat Pulev or it's been Pavekin or when David Hay was coming from, you know, when David Hay came up and everybody thought, hey, this dude probably has the, a chance. He's as he's athletic. He's quick, a little bit smaller, but he has, you know, fast hands, some power. Klitschko always likes to take on these challenges, man. And here he is, 41 years old, still taking on challenges. He still wants to, well, as of right now, it seems like he wants to get back in the ring with Joshua and try to prove himself again. You know, and a lot of fighters wouldn't do this. You know, a lot of fighters wouldn't do this um, fighting these, uh, you know, the, the top guys right now. A lot, a lot of fighters wouldn't do this, especially at this age. And the guy that's had the career that he's had, you know, there's only a certain few, man, guys like a Bernard Hopkins. Uh, I don't want to start naming everybody, but um, just especially in today's era, there's just not a, a lot of guys that can do that. And there's not a lot of guys that have the ability to do something like this. That's one thing. He's not just taking the fights, but he actually does have this the skill. And it, you know, seemed like in a Joshua fight that he had a, he still has enough in his tank to beat all these dudes. You know what I mean? But um. The fact is, he has taken two back-to-back -back losses, but uh, got to commend the dude for it, man. Definitely got to commend him, and not just for losing, but for everything, you know what I mean? But even through these losses, uh, Vladimir Klitschko still seems like he has something left in the gas tank, but I'll pick Joshua going into the rematch. You know, it's funny, man, because I went 11, shit, even the fights that he lost, I still favor Klitschko in all those fights. I can't remember really. When I picked anybody to beat Klitschko, even the Samuel Peter fight, uh, although Peter was viewed as very dangerous back then, especially back then when they fought that first time, uh, that vicious knockout he had with Jeremy Williams. He had some scary knockout wins, um, but I was still favoring Klitschko. You know, even the fight he lost to Corey Sanders, I was favoring him going into that fight. I was favoring him going into the Lehman Brewster fight. I've always favored Klitschko. The only fight I've ever... Uh, favorite the opponent was going into the joshua fight even going into the first fury fight i favorite klitschko there were quite a few fans on my videos around that time that were favoring fury though so i'll give you guys credit for seeing that uh fury victory but yeah man so i so this is the second time that i've you know because if this rematch happens i'm going to pick uh joshua to me as the favorite in that fight so uh just breaking it down stylistically and just uh he was a favorite to me going into the first fight. And then the second fight, you know, after seeing him fight the first time, I still think it's an even fight, but I'm still favoring Joshua. Um, but Klitschko show what he can do, man. He, he had the dude hurt. He had him hurt, man. He had uh, those first two knockdowns they exchanged with each other. 
it looked like those first two knockdowns they they exchanged with each other looked like uh, Klitschko had Joshua a little bit more. He he looked like he was hurt more when he got knocked down. But anyways, man, Joshua won the fight, you know. But uh, Klitschko showed that he can hurt Joshua. He showed that there are some rounds in the fight that he can outbox Joshua. That his jab will give him problems. That jab one two with the right hand. Um, he showed that he can win rounds and hurt the young man. So I can see why he would want to take the fight. You know, it's funny. It's like a guy like Klitschko, man, especially competitive like that, as great as a fighter as he is, was, however you want to put it. Um, he's always going to see a way how he could have won that fight. You know, like the Fury fight, he viewed it as, damn, if I just would have threw more punches, this is according to him, I would have I would have won that fight. With this fight with Joshua, I don't, you know, he hasn't, well, I haven't heard him say specifically, but to me, just viewing it, I'm assuming because he had some rounds where he he was out boxing Joshua and he had that round where he hurt him bad and dropped him and put him down. You know what I mean? And so to him, there's still little things in there that he can do better to win the fight. I mean, you could say this about anybody, right? But a guy like Klitschko, he's doing it against the very best guys, man. So, or guys that are at the top of the division, you know, but, um, I would like to see a fresher fight, meaning uh, I would like to see, you know, Klitschko fight Wilder. I would love to see him fight Parker. I would love to see those fights, too. Uh, so if I had to, if you you know, if it were up to me, you were asking me, I would see him. I would rather see him move on and fight another uh, top fighter. You know what I mean? But the Joshua fight is going to make a lot of money. And the first fight was a classic. You know, to me, it was at least the first fight was a classic. So. When the rematch happens, I'm going to watch now. It's not one of the situations where I'm not going to watch that fight. Oh, no, I'm going to watch that live. You know what I mean? So, um, just my opinion, man. Props to Vladimir Klitschko. Uh, he's doing something a lot of guys wouldn't do, man. And that's uh, stick around and fight the very best. And um, I guess we'll see what happens, man. I guess we'll see uh, the next three, four weeks here when uh, they make this official. But according to Eddie Hearn, though, he says that... Uh, this fight will happen in November. I'm out.